Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial, and today we're going to be talking about uh, the various nomenclature that goes along with the deck fittings on Battleship New Jersey specifically, as every little piece up here has a different name. So we're, we're going to specifically be talking about the stuff that's part of the mooring system, and we'll save other terminology for future videos. So. Just starting off, we've got the capstan, the wildcat, and windlasses. Well, what's the difference between those three things? So the wildcat is the one that has notches in it specifically for the anchor chain. In the Royal Navy, this would be called a gypsy. Don't ask me why. Uh, in the US Navy, it's called a wildcat. They're both just specially modified capstans. So outboard of the wildcat, you can see the capstan there. That is designed for mooring lines. If we are anchoring out in deep water and can't come into a harbor, then uh, we would use the wildcats to drop the anchor. If we were mooring up alongside a pier like you would normally do in your home port, like we are here in Camden, then you could use the capstan right here. You pull alongside the pier, you put your ropes out, uh, and then you use the capstan to tighten them. We'll also see on some ships windlasses, which are the same sort of drum thing, but turned on its side. So rather than being vertical like this, it'll be horizontal and you wrap the rope around it like that instead of like this. Uh, typically smaller ships have windlasses like that and also winches that are doing smaller jobs, while large ships, like a full-on battleship, is going to have a capstan. Also part of the mooring system, are chocks like this. They are reinforced to have a mooring line come through them. And uh, as the ship is swaying at its moorage, wherever it's, it happens to be tied up, uh, if all of this pressure was on one of these railings, and remember our railings are designed to be hinges, then that would just push it right over. Whereas this is a structurally reinforced thing that'll have the mooring line go through it and uh, then that mooring line might come out at a right angle, and this can take the full weight of this. All of ours are castings that were made at the Philadelphia Navy Yard while the ship was being built. So for this one, you've got the line going through the chalk and it can go straight to the capstan. But some of these chocks are further away from the capstan. Let's go look at one of those. For some of the chocks, especially ones like this one that are pretty far away from the capstan, we're over 100 feet back now, they feature what are known as fair leads, which is this piece here that is uh, able to pivot. It's got a uh, central pinion going through it that allows it to spin. So that allows the line to make an angle and go towards the capstan. On some ships, you may see fair leads like this mounted in the deck in various places. Uh, particularly merchant ships, container ships, things that have cranes and things like that, that uh, often will run lines the same way. Uh, on Iowa class battleships, you've got a couple of these chocks that are pretty far away that have them, and that is all. So here is one of our chocks that has a mooring line coming through it, and it goes right here to this mooring bit. A mooring bit is very similar to a bollard, which would just be one of these that often has a cross piece, uh, except it is two of these. And you can see that this is used to figure eight tie on a mooring line. We're not tying a complicated knot with one of these four inch thick lines. Rather, you just wrap it around enough times to create enough friction that it stays in place. If you need to cast off, it's relatively easy to unwind this as opposed to trying to untie a big complicated knot. And if you need to tighten your mooring lines, it's relatively easy to take most of the turns off of this so that you still have a little bit of friction on it, pull on this end of it to pull yourself in more, and then keep taking up the friction on this end so it doesn't go back. Iowa-class battleships have bits and not bollards, the singular ones. However, our pier here at the museum has some large decorative bollards on it. Another thing that you can tie lines off to is a cleat like this, which is usually a low uh, T-shaped piece that comes right off of the deck. Uh, 
These were added in the 1980s in Long Beach and they're just welded on structures. They're not cast structures like the other pieces I've showed you from Philadelphia. But here you can also figure eight a line around uh, for much the same reasons you would use a bit. It's just much smaller. So these cleats are associated with the small boats that the ship handles uh, and not so much the big ones. Again, uh, we have large decorative cleats on our pier. While ships and piers tend to call, they, they have the same features for tying things off and they're called the same things. If it is a freestanding structure, like this column out here in the river that the ship is moored to, that is called a dolphin. This particular dolphin has two bollards on top. Notice it's got two heads, just like a bit, but uh, each head is a separate piece. You can tie something off to each one individually, so it's really for tying multiple mooring lines off onto the same structure, not for figure eighting around the same thing. So freestanding structure in the water is a dolphin. This winch back here at the ship's boat does feature a windlass. Because it's not moving something as large as the whole battleship, it doesn't need to be an upright capstan. It is a side-mounted windlass. So these terms are not only used by the Navy, they're used by recreational boaters as well. Have you gotten them right on your recreational boat? Let us know in the comments section down below. Also let us know if there are any terms you'd like to see us cover in future videos. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate the support you guys have given us. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue supporting the channel. You can also support the museum by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us. Thanks for watching.